Have you ever wanted to paint a wizard from the realm of Gairan? Well, if so, don't miss this video coming up next. Hello once again, Warhammer fans. Welcome back to another Monster Hobbies video as I continue to show you how I'm building each of these four great wizards from our Colligat Arcane Battle Mage set from Games Workshop. And today I've got a special video for you. I'm going to show you how to build a wizard from the realm of Gairan, or at least my take on what a wizard from the realm of Gairan will look like. So this is going to be a long video, about 30 minutes. But before we begin, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this video with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, if you like them, you can follow along. And don't forget to visit our website at www.monster-hobbies.ca where you can see all our great Age of Sigmar model kits that are for sale right now. So without further ado, let's go down and see how we build this great battle mage. Today we continue on in our series of building Colligat Arcane Mystic Battle Wizards. And one of the wizards that I'm missing out of my collection of wizards is of course the wizard from Gairan, the Realm of Life. So what we're going to do is just move this out of the way and we'll take a look at what is Gairan. Here I have our White Dwarf from March 2019. And again inside this one has another of the Fantastical Realms features. And here we find Gairan, the Realm of Life. Now this is a great magazine if you have one in your collection. Of course it gives you all these different ideas for painting models from Gairan, the Realm of Life. And as we see over on this page here... <laughs> okay, we can see that there is the Jade Wound, the Plague Spire, the Phoenicium, and the Living City. And it's very green in all these, except for the Phoenicium, which is, of course, more situated on sort of a volcano kind of thing. We have an image of a wizard from, from the Realm of Life. There is a natural order to things in the Jade Kingdoms, a cynical process where birth, life, and death flow constantly into one another. So, of course, all aspects of life are continuing in this realm. Here we've got some great uh, features on the different type of people you meet in this realm and of course painting your armies. Verdant greens, earthly browns, and any other seasonal color you can think of. There are many ways to paint your models from the realm of Gairan. Check out these great examples. So of course they show you different things. And over here of course we've got a Sylvaneth army. And then we have a Nurgle army down here. And uh, they, they're talking about the vine kits that Games Workshop has in this article that you can use them for basing in Gairan. Because of course vines and trees, branches, that sort of thing is all part of nature. Here's a kit bash for uh, converting your heroes. So there's of course one of the giants holding this big stone pillar. And then in here we've got some more mages and whatnot. There's one mage here. Uh, Caradron Overlord, one of the battle mages. Jade Wizard by Dan Hardin. Andrigger by Jonathan Stapleton. And a Branch Witch uh, by Maxim Corbell. I'm reading this sideways. And then here they also have some sprites from different uh, kits. A lot of these sprites you can find in the... Well, let's just say the old Wood Elves. I guess they're the Wanderers now. But in some of the Wanderers kits, you can find these different Dryads. And then here we get into the different types of basing. And there's those little branches and uh, different bits of foliage. Woo! Trying to say that. Different base techniques. And then they have an article here on painting trees, if you have some of those tree kits. So that's always pretty cool too. And then that's where our article ends. So let's just close up our edition of White Dwarf. And then we will take a look at the parts for our battle mages and a concept I have. I'll tell you about this concept. Here we have our parts tree for the Collegate Arcane Mystic Battle Wizards. And there's one item on here that I find interesting. 
And that, of course, is the snake staff. And if you saw my build on the Shimon wizard, you'll see that I used that staff there. And uh, this staff, as I said in that video, reminds me of a story out of the Bible. And uh, it deals with Moses, who is a biblical character, of course, uh, known through all religions as one of the key figures. So I thought I would read the uh, the story involving the snake, and then I'm going to see about making a sort of a Games Workshop version of Moses. So let's read the biblical account. So here we have Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9, about this bronze serpent. It says, They left Mount Hor by the road to the Sea of Suf. Now Suf is a town in southern Palestine. To skirt the land of Edom. On the way the people lost patience. They spoke against God and against Moses. Why did you bring us out of Egypt to die in this wilderness? For there is neither bread nor water here. We are sick of this unsatisfying food. That would be the manna. At this God sent fiery serpents among the people. Their bite brought death to many in Israel. The people came and said to Moses, We have sinned by speaking against Yahweh and against you. Intercede for us with Yahweh to save us from these serpents. Moses interceded for the people, and Yahweh answered him, Make a fiery serpent and put it onto a standard. If anyone is bitten and looks at it, he shall live. So Moses fashioned a bronze serpent, which he put on a standard. And if anyone was bitten by a serpent, he looked at the bronze serpent and lived. So you can see where a Moses type of figure with this bronze serpent rod would kind of fit into the uh, Warhammer lore here in the realm of Gairan, in the realm of life. So let's take a look at those pieces and whatnot and see about making our own little Moses. This is going to be quite an interesting build. I uh, Here I have this image of Moses, along with the copper serpent that's sitting on the pole. I know this looks a little different from our wizard rod, but it would be interesting to try to make this type of robe with all the stripes going on here in our uh, painting. So I'm going to see if I can do that. Okay, let's look at those plastic components. So looking at these components, I do sort of believe that this one here is more, you know, along the lines of the other images in that book that I have of Moses. Sort of wearing a cummerbund and uh, that sort of thing. Whereas this one has more of a flower type arrangement on the bottom of the robes. However, hard to know which one to pick out of that. Because some of these arms may have different things. But I think I might almost use the same bodies and whatnot that I did with the wizard from Shaman. So that would be this body here, which I do believe, if we turn this over, that's the B body. Then uh, we've got this arm, where you put in the hand in there. And then this one here. We again will use the, the snake serpent rod, but this time we'll paint it copper, or bronze, or what it said in the book. The faces here, I think this one might be all right with the hair going out. Usually they use this one as a fire wizard, but I don't think a bald Moses and that would quite work out. Maybe in his Egyptian days. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't think I'll use any of the high collars this time around. And then uh, what else was there? Oh, so I might use this book here in his hand, because most of these things I don't think would be you know, basically the character of Moses uh, doesn't have any vials with skull heads popping out of them, or or wouldn't be... might carry a little wavy dagger, it's sort of hard to say, but no fiery skulls, for sure, or hourglasses, or skulls with candles out the top. So I do think I'll use this book, because uh, as it says, Moses wrote the first, or the Pentateuch, so perhaps this book could sort of represent that. I don't know. But I did find something that would be interesting to use on the base. This is from a... I do believe they were the Wood Elf Rangers. There's some vegetation here too. Some big leaves. 
could be interesting to use. But this piece here, this is basically a big stone. <laughs> See where I might be going with this. You could use it for the Ten Commandments. I also noticed there's a little spray down here. So that might be something interesting to paint up. Just got to see if it's all going to fit with the wizard on the 25 millimeter base because these are tiny, right? But I managed to get those little rocks on the other Wizard of Shaman, the basalt rocks painted copper. So it might work out. There's also this sprite, but I think that would be really big for the piece. That thing should be on like a 32 mil base or something larger. There's also this one, but it's sort of like a little creature with an arrow, so that doesn't seem quite right either. Anyway, if you've got all these old pieces in your collection, you can always use them to uh, customize your model. And here's our components for our Moses figure. Now, I know the book won't be quite right, because if Moses wrote the Pentateuch, he would have written it on papyrus scrolls using some sort of quill. Uh, but, you know, you, you, you have to use what you got, right? So anyway, there's the book. There's the flowing robes. Same ones as our wizard from Shaman. Then we have our serpent staff, same as the wizard from Shaman. We just have a different head here. And then there's the little stone for our Ten Commandments, as well as the base here. So one thing that is good out of this is that if I put the little stone toward the edge, I can actually fit the wizard in here. So it'll work out. It'll look nice. Okay, let's carry on. And uh, these are just roughed out. So, of course, I, I don't think I need to show you how to do this, but I will be sanding off the little bumps and using my hobby knife and all that for cleaning up. And I'll do some sub-assemblies here like I did in the other videos. So this will be glued onto here. Seam lines all scraped off. Um, I don't know if I'll glue the book in, in there yet. Not too sure. I have to think about that. But I can get the sub-assemblies done and then give this thing a shot of primer. So that's what I'll do. And uh, hold tight and we'll see how it all looks out. Here's our battle mage after being painted with white primer. Now, as a primer, I used a satin semi-gloss white from Tremclad, which does have quite a sheen to it, actually. Which maybe I shouldn't have used. There's a little stone on the base. And our uh, robes with the book. The coverage was pretty nice on it. And it allowed me to sort of keep the white in here for the inner robes. And then, of course, we've got our face here. Right there, with this crazy hair. So, next I will begin painting up some of this stuff. And we'll see how it all goes. From our illustration in that book, it does appear that the outer cloak on, on our uh, little Moses figure here is going to be a dark brown. It has yellow, white, and red stripes. So, here I have Rhinox hide. And I've got this special 10 over 0 artist pinstriping brush. As you can see, the bristles are a lot longer. So the idea is that you can actually pull nice lines out of this brush. So I'd start from the top and carefully drag my way down to the bottom, leaving some space for the white that's in there. And then uh, I'll have to do the same on the arms on this part of the cloak. And remember, there is a little bit of white in here as well. So I'll have to be careful and not to hit into that. Now with the Rhinox hide, of course, there's a range with the shade, or the wash, pardon me, and then the other two higher highlight colors. And what I think I'll do with those is put those up more into the shoulders just to... Um, have that light, you know, where it gets a little brighter toward the top, but not too much difference because of the way this robe is. So I'm going to start with this, just like I said, going pulling down, and then we'll uh, I'll do that off camera and we'll see how that looks. Here's how it looks with the stripes coming down. Now, if you think this was easy, you'd be wrong, <laughs> but still, it was quite an interesting challenge. And the hard part is that 
in the illustration there is no wind so the stripes are fairly easy to go up and down if the figure is standing straight but because this is a dramatic pose and we've got the wind blowing and the ribbons flying out and all that i had to i had to hold the arms in place on here and then try to connect all the stripes and then bend them out at the bottom so they looked wind whipped you know and that was quite a challenge to try to steer the long bristle brush because it doesn't really want to do curves that well a uh, a brush with the bristles closer like that sort of thing is better but then you need the long pole as well so that's where you sort of have to make a compromise in the creases i tried to pile in the brown in there a little more just so that it looked like uh the cape was sort of folding in on itself and that sort of thing so now the next fun part is i have to go in between these with a little bit of red and yellow without hitting <laughs> or with leaving enough white in there you know what i mean so this will be quite quite an interesting challenge so i'll just pull out the red and the yellow i'm going to use and then you guys can uh see how it goes from there. So I'll be using some Averland Sunset and my Fiston Red just to go in between all these stripes in here. Wish me luck. So here we have our Mephiston Red painted onto the cloak and what I did is I picked one side of the brown stripe to put the red on and then with the yellow I might go on the other side. So I'm gonna paint on the yellow next and we'll see what happens. The Averland Sunset. Here we have our cloak completed with the red, brown, white, and yellow striping on there. And as you can see, it should all line up once we get it together. I do believe I might need to do some touch-up once I glue on the sides. But still, it is looking pretty much like that illustration. I did have a little trouble with the Averland Sunset, but... My bottle is quite uh, dry and, you know, hard to make it flow properly. So I hope you have better success if you're going to try to do this with your uh, bottle of Averland Sunset. Now here's our little Moses with that cape done in those stripes, just like in our illustration. And now I'm going to do some skin tone here. I'm going to go the darker skin tone with Rhinox Hide, Agrath Earth Shade. Doom Bowl Brown, and finally Tuscore Fur for the final highlights. So there's our colors. Oops, there. And now I'm just going to apply them off camera. So I'm going to do, of course, our base coat and then the shade, layer one, layer two. So let's see how this looks. So now here we have the skin tone done. And like I did with the Wizard from Shaman, an earlier video, I do have the, um, if you can see it, <laughs> the tonation up here, so it's uh, lighter, and then it goes darker underneath where the shadows would be. Now, you're looking at the uh, inner robes, and if you remember, they were still the white paint color. Now they're kind of a gray, kind of weird color. What that is, is just some Drakenhof Nightshade from our shade paint. And I've painted it inside here. And then what I'm going to do is go over top of that with White Scar. And then that'll give a little bit of color, depth, and variation into those white robes. So they're not just the uh, white spray paint here, but actually look more like robes. And then on the face here, so far, I've just got the skin tone, but in the hair... I don't know how well you can see this, but I've used the Agrath Earthshade just to knock down the high white contrast. And again, I'll be going over that with our white scar. So I'll just do that off camera. I have to do it off camera because <laughs> I wear glasses and I can't really see what I'm doing too well if I'm like way over in this zone here so I've got to bring it up to my eye so that's all I'm doing okay let's see how this looks so here it is with the white painted on top and as you can see you get now a little bit of a blue-gray tonal 
in between the folds, which make it look a little better than being just pure bright white. Um, and then same with the beard here. Oops. <laughs> I don't know how well this will pick up, but you can see a bit of a brown tonal in here as it gets, you know, further back in the mound of hair. And then more white as it comes to the front. It's sort of like a Don King <laughs> sort of hairdo going on there. Um, and then I got it on the sleeves as well inside so you can see the the blue down here where the hand comes down. Okay, so that's what we're doing there. Now I think on these big ribbons I'm going to paint them with a sand color just to make it look like he's wearing some kind of scarf or something. And I'm starting to run into a problem. The snakehead staff, it's starting to break. So I might have to break this off, drill a little hole on either end, and pin it like I did here, whoops, with the head, and just get that snake back on there. It's a little bit of a weakness to this model, unfortunately, but it'll turn out fine in the end. So, let's see. Yeah, let's get the sand tone on. Oh, and I'm also thinking of painting uh, gold in here on this little chest plate, and then another green diamond in there. Okay, let's get back to work here. Here we have our four colors for our sand-colored ribbon. We're going to start off with XV88 as our base coat, and then Agrath Earthshade for our shade, Layer number one will be Baylor Brown, and layer number two is Zamsi Desert. So that'll give us our light colors for our sandy ribbon. And for that chest plate, the golds we're going to use are Balthazar Gold, and then Agrath Earth Shade for our shade. Layer one is Gehenna Gold, and layer two is Auric Armor Gold. So that's what will go on that chest plate. For the snake staff, we are going to be using our Screaming Bell as a base color, followed by Reichland Flesh Shade for our shade, Hashut Copper as layer one, and for layer two, Psychorax Bronze. And this will give the staff that nice copper color. Here's our little Moses, a <laughs> little wizard for the realm of Gairan, the realm of life, so far. Now there's the light tan color that I've done and then the copper, and then the gold on the breastplate. And I added in some blue eyes in here on his face. So, what we need to do now is there are three gems on this model, one on the back of the snake, one on the chest plate, and one on the belt, which of course I also painted the belt with gold so go for the gold. <laughs> I still have to paint the book as well. I'm just trying to figure out what kind of colors to do that with. Maybe this could be red. A little bookmark. Definitely the pages should be some kind of uh, parchment color. But it's getting pretty close to the point where we can glue them together. But again, if we do, we're going to start to cover over some of those gems. So we need to paint the gems now. And uh, I found an old article that I want to use. It's from the White Dwarf, a very old White Dwarf with the High Elves. This is November 2007, and it is on page 99. So let's just go over there and take a look at that. These are the top tips for painting gems. And it says, when painting gems, start from a base coat of Chaos Black which is now the Abaddon Black, and gradually work up layers of paint until you reach the lightest color. The gem stages used on this model are shown below. Finally, a small dot of skull white represents reflected light. So these are the old Games Workshop paint colors and codes. So red gore, blood red, blazing orange, fiery orange, and then that skull white dot. And now we have also have Ardcoat. So what I'm going to do is find these colors 
of course are black, so that would be black, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the yard coat for seven. So I'll line those up with what I think the new paints are in this range, and we'll take a look at painting those gems. These are the modern colors that I do believe they are calling out for in that magazine article. So it would be Abaddon Black, Corn Red, Mephiston Red, Wild Rider Red, Troll Slayer Orange, the little reflective dot would be White Scar, and then just to give it a glossy finish on this ruby, we would have it as Ard Coat. So here we have the two components painted with the gems. I don't know how well you can see it there. Well, maybe you can. Okay, well you can see how I painted it, just like the magazine article, and added the little dot of Ard Coat on there, so it gives it a nice sheen. And then there's the larger version of the same gem on the back of the cobra head. And again, yeah, I think it looks right. The little white dot ref light refraction and everything. So that means we're at the stage now where I can start to glue the arms and everything back onto our model and uh, make it actually look like a person instead of components. Although I still have to paint the book here. So I'll lay out the colors for the book and then we'll start wrapping it up. I'm thinking I am going to make the book the same color as the ribbons. So for base coat we have XV88. The shade is Agrath Earthshade, which I'm also going to use on the pages. And then use that same white scar technique just to bring the paper up. Baylor Brown for our layer. And Zamisi Desert for the final layer. For the uh, metal edges of the book, I'm going to continue with the copper color scheme. So we have Screaming Bell as the base coat, Reichland Flesh Shade as the shade, Hashut Copper as layer 1, and Sykora Bronze as layer 2. Finally, for the tongue of the book, we'll use Mephiston Red, Caraboro Crimson, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Wild Rider Red. And we'll probably use some Abaddon Black for scripting on the pages. And here we have our little Moses character, and I now have him all done. You can see that he is reading the book and using the copper snake. You can see the uh, nice brown tones in here. Got it for the book underneath. And then I used my little, uh, don't know if you can see this, you can see little dots on there. I used my pinstriping brush and just got a little bit of black paint on the end and tapped it in. So it looks like some writing. Now the only thing left we need to do on the figure himself is in some spots here, actually, there we go. You can see that uh, we've worn off some of the striping. So in certain areas here, I'll have to touch it up again using those three colors from originally I think it was Averland Sunset, Rhinox Hide, and I don't know, Mephiston Red. I have to take a look myself over the video. And I'll just use that pinstriper brush again, get a little paint in there, and then connect them through on the stripes. Now there's only one last thing to do, and that of course is give them a base. And we're already on our start here, with our little rock. So once the base is painted, We'll glue our Moses down, sort of like that, or no, like this, yeah, that's right. Yep. Anyway, we'll get that on the go next. On our little rock, we're going to use a base coat of Mechanica Standard Grey, followed by a Agrath Earth Shade. Uh, it does call for Nuln Oil, but I thought this might be more like a dirt look to it. So here we have Dawnstone for layer one and a Ministratum Grey for layer 2. So let's paint our little rock. Just to save some time on the video, I thought I'd double up on our paint list. So this top row is for our vines that are on that rock, and the bottom row is for the sprite. So we have Caliban Green as a base, Bealtan Green as our shade, Warboss Green as layer 1, and Moot Green for layer 2, which should give a nice healthy viney type look. And then for our, sp our sprite, we have Stegadon Scale Green for our base, Colia Green Shade, Sotet Green for layer 1, 
and Temple Guard Blue for layer 2. Should make a nice little contrast. And here we have our rock painted on our base. And as you can see, we've got a whole bunch of little vines in there. And if I just turn this around, you can see our little sprite just right here. Hiding in all the vegetation that's around the rock. So what I've done is I've just scraped a bit away where the wizard's going to be standing. And I've got this green house paint that I use. I'm just going to paint the green around here. And then I'm going to put this into our static grass. Shake it around and with the paint being wet, the static grass will stick into the paint. It should make it look more natural. Then I'm going to paint the edge here with Abaddon Black. Or Abaddon Black. So let's just check that out. So here I have this bare paint. This is a sample that I got at one of the hardware stores. You can get them to mix this for uh, going around testing in your house. However, it is a nice green and you get a lot of it. So I use it for basing. So I just put the lid here. And then in this old bucket here I've got the uh, Woodland Scenics grass. Various colors in here, I don't remember what they are anymore. But they're all mixed together. So what we do is we just take some of this. There we go. I'm going to try to avoid where I scraped. Try to avoid the putting it on that edge. Just go around here with the wet paint. Nice and careful. Up to the base of the rock. Just along there. Let's just get a little more in here. Get a nice area for all that scenic grass to stick to. I don't think I need any around that edge. So we'll just knock that out of the way. So now with the Abaddon Black, we're going to just paint that white ridge off on our uh, little base. Then I'm going to glue the wizard right down onto there, and we'll take a look at how it all goes. Here's our battle mage from the realm of Gyran. And as you can see, I have the Copper Serpent done, our little Moses guy. There's all the stripes and everything on him. There's the little rock, the Ten Commandments, with the little sprite sitting there, as well as the grass detail and our grass for our base. You can see the nice work of the striping there, the detail on the book, and everything else. So what I'll do is I'll just take a picture of him so that we can see how he looks. Well, I hope you enjoyed that great video where you get to build a battle mage just like this nice little one we have here featured today. And I wish you a lot of success on painting all these complicated stripes if you so choose to do it. It is a challenge and it did take me a little while. So, you know, share with us your videos of your Gyran battle mage over on our Facebook page. I'll leave the link below in the description. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this great video with all your friends and family. Visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And next week, I'll be showing you another wizard from another great realm. So make sure you pound that notification bell so when that video comes out, you're the first to know about it. And let's just wrap this thing up with a blooper that happened while I was filming this. Coming up right here. And here we have our wizard character, our little Moses. And as you can see, his head just fell off. Oh, that's great.